Hey guys, what's going on? Underground Geek here. And today we're going to be talking about Witchblade. This is a new series that came out yesterday. Um, it's three ninety nine. dollars I, I was kind of like, oh, I, don't, I don't think that's cool, dude. This should have been a two ninety nine book. But um, for some reason it says December 1st. I don't really know. I get, It's the first issue December. Okay. But, uh, okay, so it was written by Caitlin uh, Kittredge. And uh, it's a pretty cool cover. Um, I was kind of worried, though, because I don't see the normal Witchblade stuff. And I was like, is this going to be a different kind of Witchblade? Like, what's happening here? Uh, so here's the hard cover, and then here's the regular cover. Stop doing this, okay? Either have it this cover or have it this cover. But this goofy stuff where you do... Uh, two different covers is a waste of money. That's why I'm paying $3.99 because you wasted money on this. <laughs> but anyway, so we got a pretty cool cover there. Uh, they draw her pretty well. Um, uh, um, they, they do pretty well on the lines and everything. So moving on. So the writer, the writer of course, is Caitlin Kittredge. Uh, the artist is Roberta Ingranada. The colorist is Brian Valenzina, or Valenza. And uh, Troy Pateri is the letterer. Okay. And uh, there's all your people at Top Cow. Uh, now, we start out the story here, and it's it's kind of like one of those deals where you, you see what's about to happen, and then it cuts back to before that, and then you see all the stuff leading up to that. You know, it's, it's one of those deals. So we see her here, and she's laying there, and it says, Death is not the end. Death is a doorway, and on the other side... And she said, help, help me. And the guy's standing over, rebirth. And then we see her changing. Okay. So then we cut to, this is her in real life. Okay, this is 24 hours earlier, and she lives in Brooklyn, New York. She's obviously troubled. She's taking her meds. Uh, she's got lots of pill bottles. There's the amulet. Um, and uh, there's the weird guy on the train. Some weird guy following her. You know, I would notice that, but whatever. So there she goes. And it kind of messed with me because you notice how she looks. Okay. And then this is also her on the next page. So it totally changes. So I was kind of confused. Like she's in different clothes and everything. But this is her. She is a, a district attorney. Instead of being a detective, she's a district attorney because normally she's a detective. And uh, she doesn't have a kid in this, which is kind of weird considering most times she does have a kid. But uh, so this lady is having troubles with her husband. She's divorcing him. She's trying. He's in jail right now because he's been beating her. Uh, but, you know, he's just in jail right now as being arrested. He's not actually been in, uh, convicted yet. So there's all that controversy going on. They're trying to uh, tell her that they're going to protect her, all that good stuff, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, there, there's more dialogue about how, you know, they want, she wants them to catch him to make sure that he, he doesn't hurt her ever again. You know, normal man-hating stuff. So then we cut back to uh, her apartment again, and she's having the dream all over again. There's her uh, partner dead, not not partner partner, her assistant DA partner, not that kind of partner. And uh, there she's shot and she's dead, and then it's the cycle all over again. And then we get to see her life, everything that's happened up till then, kind of talking about different things. It's a little, It moves a little bit too fast, though, because we don't have anything to hang on to. Like We don't know her as any value yet, and they're already like going through her life and stuff. <laughs> So, uh, there, there's her when her, she's done her different, uh, apparently she's had a lot of troubles because she's been a, a news reporter. She's done a different bunch of different things. She's become a DA. And, uh, I mean, she's, you know, she's been held <laughs> hostage by people, uh, which is kind of cool. I'm glad that they're doing this kind of side because a lot of people are afraid to touch on the whole Muslim thing. But uh, they kind of brought, I mean, it's just one frame, but, you know, they at least brought it up. Um so there and there she is dead again, and this guy has killed him. There, this time it's the uh, uh, the the wife now is showing her dead too. 
And then there she is. She's washing her face off. But she knows she's washing her face off. There's blood on her face. And there she is. She looks different. And uh, it says, it's not real. It's not real. And it says, I am real. I am you. She's like, holy crap. So she knocks her stuff off the wall. She goes and jumps in a tub. There's a shadow outside the door. She's walking around. She's having visions. There's the dead body again. There's all this stuff happening. Her phone's shooting out of her hand. I mean, it's the the it's got the weird aura around her. She's having a hard time. She doesn't know what's real and what's not real. And then, bam, somebody jumps through the door or jumps through the window, grabs a hold of her. And uh, it's very creepy because he's like so new, so young, so warm and alive. And then her eyes are changing. She attacks him. And uh, we have the, the needless cussing for some reason. Cuts him on the face and then jumps out the window, scurries down the uh, fire escape and runs off. And there's somebody waiting downstairs. It says, don't struggle, I'm here to help you. And then we see this guy and he's scarred up all over his face. I don't know what's happened to him. He's obviously been in a lot of fights. But he's trying to help her. And uh, he, he says, uh, you woke up with no memory of the last 24 hours. You're hearing a voice in your head that's not your own. You had a vision of something terrible. People you love hurt or dying. Tell me any of that is wrong and I'll leave you in peace. She's like, no, it's right. And then she passes out from all the stress. And then she starts to have a vision. We see her in Afghanistan again. This is a friend of hers. But the friend tells her, of course, oh, that's rough. The friend tells her that it's not really her. Uh, this uh, vision has taken the form of someone comfortable with her. It's telling her about what's going to be happening to her. There she is shot again. And uh, so then she's waking up. She's all over again. But she's not in her, in her apartment. She's somewhere else. She says, hello. She's walking around. And then he says, ah, oh, back among the living. You want some tea? And then she says, I don't know what's happened, but you stay away from me. You're confused, completely understandable. That's all very new for you. I'm not confused. I'm ticked. I got attacked and then wake up to some random creep holding me hostage. He says, nobody's holding you uh, hostage. I brought you in here because it's safe. You know, she had passed out and he just took her somewhere to rest. He says, the artifact hasn't fully merged with you. You are at your most vulnerable until the host transfer is complete. I don't know what your deal is, and I don't care. I need to get home. So he's basically trying to tell her that that thing on her hand that she didn't have, and then one day she did have and can't take off, it's not fully merged with her yet. Pretty good, pretty good coloring on the eyes there. Uh, and then she's leaving. She went back to her apartment. And then, bam, she's shot. So this is beforehand. This is what happened to her. She was investigating something, and she was shot and killed. And uh, he said, you died and came back something new. And she says, is this hell? And he says, no, this is the opposite. This is a gift. The power of the artifact comes to the moment of the host's death. It gives life, but at a price. That's what you're, why you're hearing and seeing things. He says, you can't leave, not yet. Give it another few days. Allow the artifact to bond with you. I don't have a few days. Mira needs me, and that's the wife that she needs to protect because she's the DA. So she's headed to Brooklyn, back to her home, and uh, that's when the, uh, the artifact actually starts talking to her. It says, no, stop. We are not separate. We are one. You're separate from, you separate from me and you will die all over again. So that's the price. It kills anyone that doesn't merge with it properly because they're already dead. It's keeping them alive. And then you see all the different people through history that have bonded with the amulet. And, of course, we had to have them killing Nazis. Um, and then, I don't know, it goes in a weird, a weird uh, timeline there. You think that you would go in chronological order, but we... We, we jump from samurais back to medieval time to Nazis, and then we're jumping back to, like, she's Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> so uh, she's been missing for a couple of days because, you know, she's been resting at that guy's house, and now her assistant's trying to find her, and he's tr she's trying to tell her that uh, Mira's husband got out on bail. He's out, and he's, he's loose. And where do you think he's going to go, first things first? He's going to go right to their house and harass the wife. 
So there he is holding her at gunpoint. And he says, uh, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be, and you know, he had killed her. He says, oh, you crazy. And she, the wife beat him on the hand, uh, held the gun at her. And then there's everybody staring at each other and something's starting to happen to her. And uh, the wife's like, just do it. You know, I have better things. It, it has to be better than spending another second with you. And that's when something slaps the gun out of his hand. Uh, something's happened. And then we get this shot here where she says, leave her alone. And the power is like doing something to him. And uh, that's the end of it. I didn't really like the end because there's an unwritten rule that the first issue needs to end with the person turning into whatever they're turning into. You know, that's the way it is most of the time in anime. Uh, like, let's say a kid gets a, a, a Gundam or something like that. He's going to get the Gundam at the end of the issue. And that's pretty much what they've done here. But you don't get to see what she looks like. So I was kind of like, oh, man. But I guess it, it makes you want to read the next issue, you know? So um, I was trying to see if they did any kind of previews for the next issue. This art's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really say anything. It just has the cover. And then there's the uh, editor's page. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much... And it goes on for a while, so obviously they're trying to give some credibility to the person that's written this book. The Cyber Force looks like a kind of cool... The Basically, Cyber Force to me looks like a video game that was made into a comic. But what did you guys think? You know, they changed the Witchblade character. It's now a, a blonde-headed, uh, blue-eyed white girl instead of the dark-headed Italian that we have most of the time. And then anime, she was Asian. But uh, it's kind of cool. I like the idea of changing her up. Uh, she kind of looks like that uh, Fathom girl, the, the water girl that they had about the same time that was kind of popular. Uh, the artwork's okay. Um, it just didn't really go anywhere. You know, it kept going in circles over and over and over. I kind of wish there had been a little bit more, but, you know, they're explaining everything. They, they've got to explain it all to you. So what would you guys think? Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you kind of like, eh? Are you waiting to see on it? That's kind of why I did the video because some people's kind of asked about it, but there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about this comic book. So I figured I would read it just to see what I think about it. I'm not really psyched about the three ninety nine dollars price, but my comic book store always sells it to me cheaper, though. So I got like four or five comics, and they were only $10. So. All right, guys. Tell me what you think about it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I got some more videos coming today. Uh, tell me what you think about my other new videos that I'm doing. I've got that new editing software, so I've changed some things, but nobody's really said anything, so tell me what you think. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Underground Geek out.